guys, Olivia here, Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. Today is Saturday, June 26th, and I am back with a floss tube video. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. This is a video podcast where I talk about my cross stitching as well as quilting. However, this video is going to be a little bit different, and I'm only going to talk about one thing, and that is my Anniversaries of the Heart series by Blackbird Designs that I stitched last year in 2020. Felt like it was a really good time to do this video because I have family coming into town tomorrow. And when I normally uh, film a floss tube video on Friday, I realized there probably really would not be any way that I'd be able to film that video with everybody being here. And since I'm not really sure what is going on or what any of the plans were, I just thought now was the perfect opportunity to sit down, talk about my Anniversaries of the Heart series. So if you are brand new to my channel, welcome. And if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. So I started my Anniversaries of the Heart series last year on January 1st of 2020. And I challenged myself to finish it by the end of 2020. And I was able to meet that goal. I finished it with two days to spare. Uh, it was an amazing, wonderful journey. And of course, I documented it uh, on FlossTube as well as on Instagram and Facebook. So a lot of you guys followed along on my journey as well as a lot of you guys decided to join in and stitch it with me, which was a lot of fun because it helped keep me motivated and you know just to continue on. Uh, some of you guys have finished and some of you guys are still working on it and I just absolutely love seeing it. There was a stitch along that started January 1st of this year for a lot of people who had been inspired to start it and that stitch along is going very, very well. I love seeing them pop up and it just makes me nostalgic for when I was working on it. In fact, I wish that I could have started another one because I just had so much fun working on this one. I had so much fun researching my family history and I learned a lot and it was just such a fun, amazing journey. Um, as I was going through the year, a lot of viewers uh, sent messages asking if I would do a video that just sort of broke everything down and kind of explained my inspiration behind each piece. And I thought that was a great idea. Uh, I didn't want to do the video until I had gotten uh, my anniversaries framed and it is framed and it's sitting right here and I've actually had it framed for a week. It's been home. It's been hanging on my wall. I have been enjoying it so much. Uh, originally, I had planned to try to uh, frame it myself um, and I looked around for about a month trying to find, you know, the perfect frame online. Uh, my anniversaries finished at kind of a a funky size. Um, I stitched it on 35 count sand and it finished at 14 and 3 fourths by 21 and a half. So definitely not something that I could just go to the store and buy a standard frame for, you know, just off the shelf. Um, I realized it was going to have to be something that I would have to have cut specifically for this and that can get a little expensive. And then I guess it's been about three weeks ago now, I saw that Michaels was having a huge frame sale. I think it was 70% off their framing. So I thought, you know, I'm gonna take it in. I'm gonna see how much it costs to have it framed. And, you know, considering what some of the prices online were, I thought it was very reasonable. Um, but so I did, I went ahead, I got it framed and I got it back a few hours after I finished filming my previous floss tube video. In that floss tube video, I did want to say something, you know, letting you guys know that, you know, my regular update would actually be four weeks and not the, you know, standard two because I was going to film this video, but I was afraid my frame wouldn't, you know, come back. There would be complications and then I wouldn't be able to do the video. And since I did have to film this video a week ahead of time, you know, everything just kind of had to fall into place and it ended up working out perfectly. So. I hope you'll stick around. Um, I'm gonna take each block individually. I'm gonna put up a picture of the block and you're gonna hear my disembodied voice talking. Uh, so it's gonna be a lot of, you know, photos. And I also have photos of some of the relatives that I stitched. There are a few that I just am not able to find a picture of, um, like Ewald. <laughs> and if you, you know, followed along my journey, you know that he kind of was a he still is my obsession. I'm still 
obsessed with trying to find a picture of my husband's grandfather. But uh, everyone else, for the most part, I do have pictures of them. And so I will be inserting those too. So you can kind of get, um, you can kind of see, like this is the person that I stitched this block for. And I'll also be talking about why I stitched it for each particular person. On January 1st, 2020, I started my Anniversaries of the Heart on a piece of 35 count sand that I found in my stash. The reason why 35 count is because it was in my stash and it was the exact size that I needed. Um, I started with the very first block, which is Snow Garden by Blackbird Designs. And when I originally went and I pulled all of the colors, everything was very fallish and I wanted to kind of stay true to the color scheme because I really did like all of the colors and all of the series. Uh, so I ended up pulling a lot of it from stash, switching colors out as I went because it either blended in with my linen or it just didn't work well with all of the other colors. So this block here was quite a challenge right off the bat. I stitched Snow Garden for my maternal second great-grandmother, Martha Angeline Maxson. Uh, Martha was born June 22, 1868 in Logan, Ohio. Although there are several in records that indicate that she was actually born in Indiana. On February 4, 1893, she married my second great-grandfather, George Clark, in Oswego, Lubbock County, Oklahoma. Together, they had seven children over a 16-year period. I added the initials of George and their children to Martha's block, and the V, which is in the very upper right corner, is after my great-grandfather, Vernon Clark. My reason for including her in my anniversaries is because she was a quilter, like me, and it was through her teaching my grandma how to quilt that I was then able to be taught how to quilt as well. So it's sort of a family tradition. I'm carrying on the family tradition. Upon Martha's death, uh, my grandmother inherited Martha's treadle sewing machine, which is the treadle sewing machine that my grandma learned to sew on. And it's always my hope that someday I will be able to uh, maybe sew on it too. The only thing it really needs is a new, um, oh, there's a, like a, a there's a, uh, I can't think what it's called. It basically needs a new belt. It needs a new belt. And so once it has that, I should be able to be able to use it. Um, but because my grandma was the oldest granddaughter, my great grandmother passed it down to her. And so she had had it uh, when I was very little. I was told the story of the treble sewing machine and that it would be mine one day. It was my inheritance. So I always grew up knowing the importance of this piece of family history. And a few years back, I did inherit the piece from my grandma when, um, because the, the house that my grandparents had, um, my brother tore it down and they built a new house. And so my grandma was moving into uh, like a, a, a mother-in-law suite is what they call it. Uh, and so she told me that it was time for me to come and get it and it would be, my, it would be in my keeping for me to pass down to my oldest granddaughter and to tell the story of my great-grandmother as well as my grandmother. Uh, a few things that I did learn, um, which I should have known this as I was stitching uh, Martha's piece, is that my grandmother is born on her birthday and, and she did live with my grandma when my grandma was a little girl and they celebrated their birthdays together many, many times. Um, I also learned yesterday when I called up my grandma and was talking about it, um, her grandparents didn't live together. Um, they were still married, but they were separated. And he was a traveling photographer, so he was not around. And basically, you know, he would, you know, come around to see his family. And she, you know, he would leave and she'd find out she was pregnant. She, she pretty much had to raise her kids by herself. So seven kids she had to raise by herself. And so as you can imagine, that probably caused a lot of um, issues. Uh, so they, they were separated. She lived uh, with my grandma and my, you know, my grandma's family uh, as my grandma was growing up. And then um, she actually passed away here in Jervis and then was buried next to George in Yakima. 
The second block in the series is Valentine Rose. And since it is very much a like Valentine, February type block, I decided to stitch it for my son, Ethan. Ethan was born in February of 2006. Um, on this particular block, I used a lot of DMC. Um, I did not have any of the called for threads in my stash, except maybe one or two. Uh, but I remember that this one was mostly DMC. So when I was pregnant with uh, my son, Ethan, I always liked the name Ethan um, ever since I was pregnant, even with Allison. I mean, Allison's name was actually going to be Ethan if she had been a boy. And the name just kind of stuck with me and I really did like it. I don't know if it's because uh, when I was pregnant with Allison, the Mission Impossible movies were really popular and the main character's name was Ethan. Uh, but I did really, really like that name. And uh, when, of course, she was, you know, she was born a girl and I just kind of held on to it. And so when I found out that I was pregnant with um, a son, I decided his name was going to be Ethan. I'm actually the one that kind of chose Ethan's name. Um, so if Allison had been a boy, her name would have been Ethan Bradley. Although uh, we also were entertaining Daniel, but I was leaning toward Ethan Bradley after my brother Bradley. Um, but since Ethan was the second child, I decided to name him after my littlest brother. Um, and so Ethan's name is Ethan Matthew. Now the third block in the anniversaries of the heart series is the bonus block. And it is the bonus block that you will find in number seven, Swan Lake. And so this is the bonus block. This one I did not personalize for anyone. Again, I stayed very true to the colors. Um, and this is kind of where I started really paying attention to what I was using so that that way, as I went through the whole series, I could make sure to take a lot of the colors and incorporate them into other blocks as well. Um, so that's kind of where, as I started stitching it, I thought, okay, I really need to start paying attention to what I'm using, make sure everything has written down, <laughs> um, and just, you know, really, really keep track of it all. Um, this is not one that you have to personalize. You could, if you wanted to, you could, you know, do the alphabet all in one color and then just have maybe your initials, you know, show up in a different one. I've also thought from time to time that this particular one would be perfect as just a small stitch all by itself to put like in your trench bowl or your dough bowl or, you know, to just have it out as like a filler block and other holidays when maybe you don't have a whole lot. Um, and I think that maybe at some point I might restitch this one again for that purpose. So the fourth block in my Anniversaries of the Heart is the third chart in the Anniversaries of the Heart series, A Wish for You. This block, uh, I knew right away I was going to stitch it for, um, at first it was just going to be my husband's mother, Annette, because she was very proud of her Irish heritage. And to me, this block screams St. Patrick's Day, March, Ireland, uh, and I knew it was gonna be perfect for her. And then before I started stitching it, I decided to stitch it for both of my husband's parents. A Wish For You, the fourth block in my Anniversaries of the Heart series, was stitched in memory of my husband's parents, Robert Clark and Annette Fuller. I never got the chance to meet Robert. He died the summer before my husband and I started dating in 1997. But from everything that I've heard, all of the stories, he sounded like he was a pretty cool guy. Uh, Robert was born in Baraboo, Wisconsin in May 1914, and Annette was born in Cook County, Illinois in March 1917. And in the funny way that life works out, both the Gust and Fuller families relocated to Seattle, Washington, where the two lovebirds met and were married in 1939. Uh, they had four children whose initials I have stitched in the block. Uh, they are in the vine that winds up on the right side of the house. So it's in that vine that comes up out of the pot. Um, there is a B for my husband, Brian, his sister, Sheila, and then Tim and Terry. Uh, my, my husband, Brian, is, is actually the youngest of the four siblings.
Originally, I was going to take out uh, a wish for good health, good luck, and happiness, and I was going to try maybe to put something else in its place. But I, I re as I was stitching it, I really felt like I should leave that in there. That just seemed something like very Irishy, and so I left it as it was, and then um, I stitched Robert and Annette's names one over one as well as all of the uh, the names in the two previous blocks. I forgot to say that I did stitch um, the initials one over one and you know Ethan's name and date of birth are also one over one. The fifth block in my Anniversaries of the Heart series, which is the fourth chart of the series, is Pink Hill Manor. Um, this, and I hope it's not confusing. So there are 14 blocks in the whole series, but two of them are bonus blocks. And when you stitch them all together, of course, it makes the 14 blocks, but then it kind of kicks them out of order. So this is the fourth chart, but in my anniversaries, it is the fifth block, and that is Pink Hill Manor. And when I first, you know, found this one and it came and I was looking at it, I decided that I was going to stitch this one for my maternal grandparents, Roy and Yvonne. Uh, because growing up, my grandma always had a beautiful flower garden. She had several beds. She grew roses, and then the spring tulips would come up. I mean, she always had flowers blooming all summer long. And when I saw this block, I thought, this is the one for the two of them. Pink Hill Manor, which is the fifth block in my anniversary series, was stitched for my maternal grandparents, Roy Parnell and Yvonne Clark. Roy was born in Greenville, South Carolina on November 10th, 1937, and growing up, we would celebrate our birthdays together because mine is two days later on the 12th. Uh, my grandma Yvonne was born in June in 1937. She was born June 22nd in Yakima, Washington. My grandparents were married in Woodburn, Oregon on May 4th, 1956, and had two daughters, which I have stitched on the left side of the house, uh, my aunt Susan and my mom Sandra. Uh, the fun fact, <laughs> in which I, I definitely wanted to include this a little uh, tidbit, is um, my grandpa was part of a work crew that uh, came around to work on various farms in the Willamette Valley, and he ended up working on my grandma's family farm. He fell in love with my grandma at first sight but she did not like him one bit. And when I see pictures of my grandpa when he was young, uh, which I'll try to include a picture of him, he kind of reminds me of uh, James Dean. He was, he was sort of a bad boy and she was not having any of that, but he wore her down and a couple of months later they were married and they had a wonderful marriage and they, they were definitely, um, a good example for me growing up of, of like a good relationship between two people. Uh, my grandma taught me how to quilt. She taught me how to can. She taught me how to hand embroider, cross stitch. She pretty much taught me everything I know, or at least laid the foundations for everything that, you know, creatively I do. And I'm forever grateful for that. So the sixth block in my series is the fifth chart farmhouse. And this was the one that when I very first started hunting for the charts, this was the one that I went for first because at the time they hadn't re-released them yet. And so this one was kind of uh, tricky to find, but I was able to get a hold of it. And so once I knew it was coming, then I started looking for like happy birthday was another one that was always kind of hard to find as well as pumpkin farm. So once I had those three in my hot little hands, then I started searching for the rest of the series. So again, everything was just kind of uh, purchased out of order. I basically just wanted to make sure before I started any of it, I had all of the charts in my hands. So the farmhouse block, which is my sixth block, uh, was stitched for my paternal grandparents, William Leinbach and Marianne Krapika. My grandfather was born March 13th, 1929 in Troy, Kansas, and the Leinbach family lived in and around Troy, Kansas and St. Joseph, Missouri. And I still do have relatives that live back there, distant cousins. Um, and so if you're from that area and you know a Leinbach, I'm probably distantly related to them. 
Uh, my grandpa's family packed up and moved across the country to Oregon in the late 1940s. Uh, my grandma was born in, my grandma, Marianne, was born in Aurora, Oregon on June 2nd, 1931. And she grew up here in the Willamette Valley and met my grandfather while picking green beans on a farm that he was a foreman for. They were married May 24th, 1950, and together had three children whose initials I have included. Uh, my um, uncle, Sonny, who is uh, William, he's named after my grandfather, my dad, Gerald. And then um, on the other side of the house, on the right side of the house is an L for my aunt, Laura, Laura Lee, who passed away right after her first birthday. And I felt like it was important to include her. Growing up, uh, my grandparents really didn't talk a whole lot about her, um, but I did feel like it was important to make sure she was included on their piece. My grandparents grew Marion berries on their farm, which I spent many summers picking on the berry vines near the house, which in the original chart, I think that they're meant to, they're kind of in the shape of, I'm guessing, strawberries. Um, I decided that I wanted to have them resemble the Marion berries that my grandparents did grow. And so I stitched those in French knots. And I have many happy, even though at the time it wasn't necessarily happy, you know, picking berries in the hot summer sun. But uh, probably until I was 17, I picked berries every summer. Of course, by then my grandfather had passed away in 92 of colon cancer. So my seventh block and the sixth chart in the series is happy birthday. Uh, this one I had originally planned to stitch for my paternal great grandmother. So it's my dad's grandma. And I started this, I worked on it a little bit. Uh, and then the next morning, or I guess the next afternoon, our dog Molly passed away. So I decided that I was going to stitch this block for Molly because she was a part of our family and I wanted to do something to commemorate her and just, you know, I wanted to do something. Uh, so Molly was born April 19th, 2008 in Green Acres, Washington, and she was an Airedale Terrier, just the best dog with the best attitude. Um, I. So I had started off with stitching her name and then her date of birth and then, you know, 2020, her, um, the year she passed away. And then as I was kind of working my way down, I wanted to find something, I wanted to do something that was really going to, was really going to, you know, be a memory for her, just something, you know, and so I was kind of scouring I thought you know maybe I would like stitch a little if I could find like an Airedale or, or something puppy paws something and then I just happened to find an Etsy shop called cute patterns by Maria and she had an Airedale pattern and it was an, a Christmas ornament so the Christmas ornament itself wasn't that large and I thought if I stitch it one over one it would only be like not even an inch and a half and it, it's, it's very narrow, so it would only take up a small area of the anniversaries. So I decided to eliminate the tree that was on the right side of the house, and I stitched a Airedale on the side. And I didn't want to put too much around her. I didn't want to put any puppy paws. I didn't want to like crowd it in. Basically, I wanted to be able to look across the room and see her sitting there on the side of the house and I would just always have her sitting there. And it turned out perfectly. Um, it took me probably two days to stitch. I mean, it's, it's a lot of stitches and a little place, but I feel like the colors were perfect and it looks exactly like her. And I'm very happy with how it turned out. So the next block in the series, which is the eighth block on my anniversaries, is, is also the eighth chart in the series. And I did a little switcheroo. So typically you're supposed to stitch Swan Lake, but I decided to flip them around. I think it might've had something to do with the color of Swan Lake. I think I wanted it to be a little bit farther over um, because there wasn't really a whole lot of white and um, like that grayish blue on the 
the far side of my anniversary. So I thought I'm gonna flip the two of them. So the next block, which is the eighth block in on my anniversaries, as well as the eighth chart in the series is Clara Allen. And I decided to stitch this for my daughter Allison because this block definitely does have like a August vibe to it. And she was born in August. So the eighth block was stitched for my daughter Allison. Uh, and again, I swapped it with uh, number seven, Swan Lake. And because I I kind of treated the, some of these blocks as months, like calendar months to represent the person that I'm stitching it for, um, this one was for Allison's uh, birth. Um, Allison was born August of 2001. And I did let Allison pick the colors of her block out. And out of all of the anniversary series, this one is my favorite block. I just really love the color of the house and I love the colors of the sunflowers and I, I just love all of how it turned out. Uh, I stitched Dear Daughter in place of Dear Sister and I did do it over one. Uh, when I was pregnant with Allison, my husband was actually the one who picked out Allison's name and her middle name is Ray, which um, he, named it after the Egyptian sun god Ra. And so he felt like that was like a really cute feminine version of that. And he's always been very much um, into Egyptian history and artwork and things like that. Uh, and when Allison was little, I used to call her Ali Ray as her nickname. And I still do call her Ali Ray from time to time. Moving right along, the ninth block in my anniversaries is the seventh chart, which is Swan Lake. This one, I decided to stitch it for my paternal great-grandmother. So it's my dad's grandma. Her name was Mary Slaby. Uh, Mary was born in Benton County, Minnesota on March 3rd, 1901. It's possible she might have been born in Alberta, Minnesota. Uh, I do uh, show that the family lived in Alberta in 1905 during the 1905 census, but as far as like her birth record, it just says uh, Benton County. Um, they show that they did kind of live kind of in and around the Alberta area. Uh, the family did move to Oklahoma around 1920 and somewhere between 1920 and 1925, her family moved across the country to the Willamette Valley of Oregon, which is where she met my great-grandfather, John Kirpika, and married him in 1925. Uh, the reason why she is in my anniversaries is because she was a quilter like me. Uh, so on both sides of my family, I have a quilting legacy. Uh, my dad told me that her and her sisters used to get together and they used to quilt each other's quilts. And I actually have the honor of having one of her quilts and I do cherish it always. Every time I see it, just having that little bit of her is uh, so wonderful. Now, the only thing I changed about this particular chart was I did not add any of like um, initials as far as my um, great grandfather or the children that they have. I just have Mary's name stitched one over one. I have an S that is um, sort of, I don't necessarily think, it's not necessarily a, a, a specialty stitch. It's, it's a satin stitch over the house. And then of course I have 1901 down below between the two swans for the year that she was born. Um, the reason why I did not put any of that information is because currently I'm stitching Anne Priest and that is going to be dedicated to John and Mary. And I will have, um, on the one side, I will have, you know, her name with her date of birth and then date of birth, date of death, and his name, date of birth, date of death, um, the year that they got married, and then the initials of their children will be kind of around Anne Priest. And so that's why I didn't include those initials in my anniversary. The 10th block of my anniversaries is the ninth chart in the series, Moonlight Visitor. And I, so when I started stitching this block, I stitched it for my husband's grandparents, Ewald and Pearl Gust. And Ewald is very much an enigma, even to his own family. Uh, so, 
Uh, Moonlight Visitor is the 10th block in my anniversaries and was dedicated to my husband's grandparents, Ewald and Pearl Gust. If you followed my journey last year, you'll remember Ewald was an enigma for me. He still mostly is. My husband's family knows almost nothing about him as my father-in-law in his grief at 16 over losing his father basically burned all of his pictures, all of just everything, just burned it all. And he never talked about him other than like offhanded a few little, like my father worked for the railroad. Um, so they did, you know, they did know that, but they didn't know really anything. And so any little information that I've been able to find, they always really love hearing it. Now, while I was uh, working on this particular block, you know, I, I would talk about it on my floss tube and there was a viewer who actually, um, I was on Ancestry and all of a sudden this um, new information popped up and I went and I looked and I saw this name and I thought, I wonder if I'm related to this or if my husband's related to this person because they had put um, some newspaper articles of Ewald on Ancestry. So I contacted her and she emailed me back <laughs> and she told me that she watches my floss two videos. She uh, is on Ancestry and she decided to kind of poke around. She was able to kind of point me in some direction um, to the newspaper that would have been printed during that time. And I was able to read newspaper, just short little gossipy column, like clippings. Um, about Ewald, about Pearl, and she was able to tell me that they were married in September 11th, 1912. And that was amazing because that was not information that any of my husband or his siblings knew. So I, that was just the best news ever. Um, I have since then, I have been able to find um, some information about his brother, as well as a picture of his brother and his wife. Unfortunately, they did not have any children. So I am still kind of chasing down leads as I find them. It's, it's really hard. I mean, you really have to poke through. It's a needle in a haystack. But when I do find information, it's like, I've won the lottery. So I'm hoping my plan is to still continue to keep searching for what I can. And I'm hoping that eventually there will be a picture of Ewald because he, he still haunts me. I just, I don't know what it is. I just, I feel like I have to find, I have to find him. I just have to, I have to find him. I know he died in Seattle, Washington. Um, it does not show that he was cremated. Um, so he's buried somewhere up in Seattle. His wife, Pearl, is actually buried in Washington. Um, and she did remarry um, several years after he had passed away, she remarried. And that is actually who my husband remembers as being his grandfather. So when I started asking like, well, why, you know, you know, why, why, why? Um, even he was like, I don't even know what my grandfather, like my real grandfather's name is. So it, it's been, it's been fun. It's been challenging. And I still continue to look for information on Ewald, but this particular block, I felt like to me, even though I've never been to Baraboo, Wisconsin, in my mind, it just sort of feels like a wisconsin -y vibe. So I took out the moth which was at the top of the house. And that is where I stitched Ewald and Pearl's names one over one, as well as 1912. I did not include, oh yes, I did. I did include um, their, they had one son, Robert, and I did include his initial, which is in the upper right-hand corner. <laughs> anyway, I, I really enjoyed stitching this particular block. I love all of the colors. And down below the house, I decided to stitch Gust. And I mean, it fit there really perfectly. And I decided um, I was just gonna stitch it full cross two over two. So Ewald Julius Gust was born December 8th, 1885 in Baraboo, Wisconsin. And from the newspaper articles was quite the social kind of guy. He sounded like he was a lot of fun to be around. Um, my husband's grandma, Pearl Clark, was born the 5th of March, 1887 in Clayton, Iowa. Uh, the family relocated to Baraboo and as fate would have it, met Ewald. The two were married on September 11th, 1912. So the 11th block in my anniversary series is the 10th chart 
in the anniversary series and that is pumpkin farm so this was the third chart that i you know when i was searching for you know the charts this was the this was the third one out of the three that i knew i needed to find first before i even attempted to get any of the other ones this one is this one still continues to be a little bit tricky it comes in and out of stock all the time and it's just because it's the cutest little autumn piece so this particular piece i stitched for my husband and myself uh, we were married in november which is why it's in the 11th spot on my anniversaries uh, and it's, you know, just kind of a perfect coincidence. I knew right away that I was going to stitch that for my husband and myself. Uh, I met my husband in March of 1997. However, we did not start dating until November 1997. Um, how we met was I worked for a temp agency and they sent me to uh, Thrifty Payless Reclamation Center which uh, later became Rite Aid when Rite Aid took over Payless. Um, but I went to work as a temp on, and I was working, they had, the, um, uh, there was a, there was like two lines of like scanner, um, it looked like a register. And basically all of the stores in the United States, they would send their damages and their recalled items to the reclamation center. And then they would have people that would work on the two different lines, scanning the stuff back into the system so that that way the company could recoup their losses. So when I first started working there, when I walked in the door that very first day, I checked in at the security desk. And while I was waiting, this tall, blonde haired blue eyed guy walked in the door and um, when he first saw me he looked a little stunned and I thought that was kind of odd you know do I have something on my face maybe it was somebody behind me and he, he just looked kind of you know stunned. like I like made him nervous or something so he went and he sat down uh, behind me as I was checking into the office and then they told me to sit down, so I sat down right next to him. And I remember this guy came out, who I later learned was the assistant manager, and he starts talking to Brian. Only um, Brian's not really talking back to him. He uh, he just he seemed very very flustered, like out of sorts. And I thought that was kind of strange. That you know, I thought, oh, it's, he must be having a bad day or something. And then they the floor manager came and got me and I went out into the warehouse which is where they kind of gave me a tour and then told me what I was going to be doing and so they put me on the damage line and the boxes that came in were horrible they were horrible um, and some of them were very very heavy and as I'm scanning some of this stuff in, I look up and I see the tall blonde haired blue-eyed man staring at me and I was like what the heck he keeps staring <laughs> and every once in a while, you know, you just kind of, it's, it's a, it's a boring job. Um, and you know, you would just kind of, you know, you'd be scanning stuff in and every once in a while my pile would move and I'd look over and he was moving the boxes onto the, can, you know, the belt so that that way I could, you know, I wouldn't have to struggle with the heavy boxes. And I thanked him of course. So as the week went on, um, every once in a while I would look up and I would see him. He was always kind of around, not like stalkery, but I would see him every now and again and he would always look at me. And of course then he would get like very embarrassed <laughs> because I would catch him staring at me. Um, and then on Thursday, the floor supervisor came over and he asked me if I had any computer experience. And I said, of course I do. And I told him the experience that I had because I did at that point, I had had a year of college and I told him what my experience was. And he said, good, uh, because Monday you're going to go work in the shipping office as a shipping clerk. And I was just happy because anything to get me off of the line. Um, so on Monday morning, I reported to the shipping office and guess who was sitting at the desk? It was the tall, blonde haired, blue eyed man. And I was going to be working for him. He was my boss. And um, yeah, and the rest is history. Uh, I worked there, we started dating in November. We dated for a year. And then we were married November 22nd, 1998 in Reno, Nevada. 
and we've been married 23 years this coming November, and we have two children, Allison and Ethan, which I did stitch their initials one over one on the right side of the house. I also uh, stitched a G for Gust, and I stitched um, our names down below next to the pumpkin, also one over one. So the 11th block in the series is the 12th block in my anniversaries, and that is Evergreen Lane. I decided to stitch this one for my husband's grandparents on his mother's side of the family. So the 12th block in my anniversaries is stitched for my husband's maternal grandparents, Howard Fuller and Mary Crowley. I felt like since both of my grandparents were on my anniversaries, it was only right to include both of his. Howard Fuller was born April 9th, 1894 in Kalamazoo, Michigan. And as it would turn out, I also have family that lives near that area as well. And Mary Crowley was born in Dowick, Michigan on the 15th of May, 1893. The two were married February 16, 1915 in Chicago and had two children, a son who died in infancy, and my mother-in-law, Annette. Howard and Mary did divorce, and I can't remember if he married someone else or he just had a girlfriend. Um, but Mary, she just was living life and having a great time, and she sounded like she was super, super fun. Um, but the two of them, Howard and Mary, did find their way back to each other and were remarried in 1976 and stayed married until um, Howard passed away. And then later, Mary did as well. The next block in the series, which is the 12th chart, but it is my 13th block, is Elizabeth Jane. So this one I decided to stitch for my parents. Um, this was a block that I, it wasn't, so when I got to this point, uh, and as I was approaching this block, I didn't quite know how I wanted to, to do this particular one because I still had my parents that I needed to do. And I didn't know if I should do my parents together or do them separate. So the 13th block is for my parents, Gerald Leinbach and Sandra Parnell. Uh, my parents were born and raised here in the Willamette Valley. They were married October 23rd, 1976 and had three fabulous, fantastic, wonderful children. <laughs> However, they are divorced now and I honestly didn't know how to put them in my anniversaries. But upon looking through the charts, I hadn't made a, a decision about. Elizabeth Jane seemed the perfect solution with the two houses. So I had both of their first names and the first initials of my brothers and myself. So um, my initial is above the White House, my brother Brad is below the White House next to the Tulip, and my littlest brother Matthew is way up at the top on the right-hand side. All of the names are stitched one over one, except for Leinbach. So uh, because the chart had that big area for Remember Me, I thought, and you know, since I had also stitched Gust, I wanted to stitch Leinbach in, in, a, in a, you know, big, bigger, so that that way both names were represented and they showed up very, very well. Um, so I did stitch them both with the same color. Um, and I really, I like how this one turned out. So it's got the two houses um, and I just felt like it worked out um, because again, I didn't really know what to do I didn't know how I wanted to do it. I felt like it would be really weird if I didn't put my parents where I had all of you know the other relatives and, and, and all of that, and especially my husband's parents. And I felt like there would be more questions about why I didn't versus why did I. So I decided this particular block was perfect for them. And I think it turned out really, really good. I love all of the colors. I know this one typically is like the Christmassy um, block of the series, but I like it with the two houses. I like that it represents both of them and that I still do have that bit of history in this piece as well. Now the very, very last block is also from the 12th book, Elizabeth Jane. It is the second bonus block 
of the series. And this one is sort of like the label where you record your name and the date you stitched it. And you know, it's just kind of like the end. Um, this particular one, I pretty much kept everything true. I didn't change the verse. Um, I did stitch my name is Olivia Gust, Oregon is my home to those I hold dear recorded here. Um, I pretty much kept everything the same. Uh, so uh, this particular box, I actually goofed and I stitched both birds facing the same direction instead of centered with the year in between them. But it makes sense because they are keeping an eye on Freddie who sits below the house. I decided to add Freddie to my anniversaries because he came to us in 2020. Uh, he is stitched one over one and the chart came from Cute Patterns by Maria on Etsy. Uh, it is the Shih Tzu chart and I modified it to look like Freddie. I also added Freddie's initials. Um, FMG stands for Freddie Mercury Gust and Freddie was born May 22nd, 2020. And I absolutely love how it turned out. Um, it looks exactly like him and he does like to chase birds. So even before I stitched, you know, the birds facing the wrong direction and him there, um, he could have cared less about birds last year. But this year, if there's a bird in the yard, he's chasing it. So it seemed appropriate that both birds were facing him, kind of keeping an eye on him. Like, what are you doing over there, cutie? Um, Anyway, so I also added the year 2020 down below, and that concluded my entire series. It was a lot of fun to stitch, and I had the best time working on it. Again, researching my family history, it was it was a lot of fun. I it it was challenging at times when you know pulling for colors. Um, some of them it took a little while to pull the colors for them. Uh, just because, you know, there was, there was, I wanted to keep everything almost color-wise exactly like the charts. Uh, so sometimes it did provide a challenge. The only block that I had every single called for color and every single color worked out perfect was the pumpkin farm block that I stitched for my husband and myself. So, so I had to turn my light off because otherwise you would see the light reflected in the frame. So before I show it to you, I'm just gonna give you a quick little kind of talk about what I did. Um, I did send it to Michael to have it framed. Uh, my husband went with me when we when I went to go find out, you know, what would be like an estimate. And my husband's actually the one that saw the frame immediately upon walking up to the counter. I was working my way down the frames listed and um, he said something about the time I saw it. I knew, I knew the moment my eyes laid on that frame that that was going to be the one. And I find it so funny that both of us, like he said something to me as my eyes landed on the frame and that was, it was just like boom, instantaneous. That was the one that was gonna be for my anniversaries. We did enter, you know, I did have her pull a couple of other ones just to be absolutely sure, but my eye just kept traveling back to that frame. Um, I also decided to have it framed behind museum glass because my hope is that this piece will be um, a heritage piece. It will um, accompany the treadle sewing machine. Um, I just, even though when I inherited the, um, the sewing machine from my grandma. It wasn't like it came with anything extra. This was just something that I decided I wanted to accompany it. And I also will send my great grandmother's quilt with it as well. But here is my anniversaries, all framed up. And let me get it just right so that the window is not showing. So here it is. And I apologize, the window is going to glare off of it, off of the glass. But I absolutely love how it turned out. This frame is perfect. The moment she set the piece of the corner of the frame uh, piece next to it, you could immediately see all of the green that was in the piece just sort of come alive. It is absolutely the most perfect piece and I will make sure to put a better picture of it um, at the end so that that way you can see it a little bit better 
Um, and again, I apologize that the uh, there's going to be a reflection, so that I'm keeping it kind of tilted downward. But I I just I really really love it. So it hangs in the other room, and so I see it every single day. Um, it's on the wall opposite my Queen of Freedom. So both of those fabulous pieces are in the same room together, and I love it. This was such an amazing journey, and I'm so glad that I that I did it and got it done and uh, now it's framed and now I get to enjoy it for many, many, many years. And I just wanna thank all of you guys who made the journey with me, who followed along last year as I uh, began the journey and who kept me motivated and rooted me on and just everything. I just thank you so very much. So again, I will put a um, I will put a larger picture of it, kind of a close up of it, so that you can see the frame and everything. And I'll make sure that it you know stays there for a few minutes. I had such a wonderful journey. Um, if you are considering starting one for yourself and you want to start researching your family tree, um, I would recommend starting with FamilySearch.org, and I will put a link to that down below. That's how I got started before I eventually went and started um, searching on Ancestry. Um, but that is a great resource to get you started and kind of begin charting your own family tree. But I, yeah, I had a wonderful time and I know that if you're considering doing it, you will too. So guys, that brings me to the very end of my video. I thank you so much for stopping by today. I'll be back in two weeks to share my regular update. So I will have four weeks of progress to show you both on cross-stitching and quilting. I know a lot of you guys uh, loved the cheddar quilt that I showed in my last video, and I do have that one finished. It's just sitting on my quilt machine waiting to get quilted. So I'm excited to show that to you next, next time. So, well guys, I hope you have a wonderful 4th of July and that you get tons of stitching done and that where you are, it's not going to be as hot as it's going to be here today. It's supposed to be 107 and then it's supposed to be 115 tomorrow. <laughs> so anyway, thanks so much for stopping by today and I hope you have a wonderful two weeks and I will see you all again soon. Bye.